you know, with the uh, you know the uh, reopening I expect the next year uh, and uh, you know almost uh, 70 percent now fully vaccinated by now we expect uh, drive of growth next year will be private consumption and the construction which was a bit weaker uh, this year uh, on the other end uh, this year's growth was uh, driven mostly by capex and the export for the export next year is uh, still uh, you know there are bulls and bears but uh, we are at the margin on the bull side given that uh, we still expect uh, you know stronger uh, the uh, growth uh, of uh, korea's trading partners will add uh, more jobs and uh, income in a way to increase demand for uh, you know goods for from from asia including korea how sanguine can economy watchers be essentially about the exports um, angle to the story that's that's aiding growth because obviously the key trading partners for South Korea are China the United States and European Union and I'm looking at the growth numbers there exports for the month of October grew 36 percent soared actually 36 percent so there is a fair amount of momentum there but with China slowing mm. uh, do you think that that risk is priced in to the growth momentum that can impact South Korea in a major way or would some of the stocks yeah. be taken up by U.S. and the and the EU region? Good question, but that depends on your perspective. I think it's uh, something like uh, you know, uh, half glass full or half glass uh, you know the empty. Uh, if you're thinking about uh, you know double digit growth of uh, export this year, Asia as a whole like more than twenty percent. Obviously, this will not be repeated next year. Uh, but uh, if you are concerned that it might contract, given you know very strong momentum this year, and given, you know, uh, possible substitution of, uh, you know, services uh, from, from goods uh, upon the opening, you know, we are talking about uh, uh, high single digit or uh, middle single digit, depends on where you are, but that should be, uh, you know, the comfort. In terms of uh, your question on the, um, the Chinese growth slowdown and this impact on Korea, yes, uh, it will be affecting Korea's export negatively, but the impact will be much less than previously, uh, given that uh, you know Korea's exposure to Chinese domestic demand has been uh, relatively uh, weakening, and our expectation is that uh, you know probably one tenth of what happening to China will have impact on Korea. Which means that if uh, China slow down one or two percentage points because of uh, domestic uh, you know the idiosyncratic act factors. Uh, then you can expect about 10 to 20 base point to decline in overall Korea's uh, GDP, which is not as significant as before. I guess the bigger question over here, Guhun, is how does that impact the thinking at the Bank of Korea? Uh, and do they actually go ahead with another rate hike uh, come uh, November 25th, uh, which is what the market is expecting? Or do they pause? Do they delay mm. that rate hike? That's uh, relatively easy to, easy to answer. They will definitely, I think, uh, uh, increase rate in November, and then depends how things goes next year. We are thinking that they will uh, gradually uh, normalize the, uh, the, 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 the extent of monetary accommodation given uh, strengths of the growth. We are talking about next year 30% or slightly above 30% and uh, elevated inflation and also their concerns, legitimate concerns about financial imbalances, especially in the housing market in Korea.